Hey, hello, and welcome back to this week's blog vlog. We're going to do a little fish tank thing here right now. You can see the headless horseman, the spooky tree, some sort of a ghoul. There's a ghoul back in there, an eyeball staring at you. That's Big Brother. I think we're going to get to see the skeleton come out of the tank. There he is. Ah! All sorts of stuff. Very spooky. Very spooky. Stink and a half. Okay. <laughs> the worst lighting of all time. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So once again, welcome. Hello again. And uh, as usual, thank you for following along. Um, yeah, this is great. We got another blog and blog here for you, titled "So Who Is This Icky Guy Anyway?" Icky guy. Who is what the heck? Yeah. Good. So. Hello, and again, thank you for reading and listening along. In the last blog, we talked about simply living, uh, living the life you wanted to live, right? Yeah. Sounds simple enough. It's your idea, right? Yeah. Oh, but nothing is that simple. Even yeah. our fun has to be serious. You know? Yep, always. Very serious business. Very serious. That's why you wear all the electronics and all the rest of the stuff to see if you're having fun. Got to make sure. Am I getting, am I getting that 1%? Am, uh, am I there? Yeah. We are going to have so much blanking fun. Exactly. That we'll need blanking plastic surgery. Exactly. To blanking remove the blanking smiles from our blanking faces. And that's a Chevy Chase quote. Yeah. From uh, the Christmas or from the no, vacation. No, from vacation movie, if you'll recall that. Yeah, that's how it is. We're going to have fun or else, you know, and that's it. Or, or basically die trying. That's, that's our attitude, uh, mostly on fun and, and living and stuff. So I thought I'd throw very that serious, in. Very serious. Very serious. We're going to be very serious about having fun. Perhaps if we really tuck in and really take care of these bodies, yeah. someday they will be good enough and alive Sorry. enough that we can finally get around to living. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it. You'll take care of this body, grind away, grind away, everything, anything it wants, and then all of a sudden, one day, there will be a couple minutes where you're going to have a little sunshine, and uh, oh, it was all worth it. Yeah. Mm. A little silly. Not too dumb. to be. Sadly, that body you dedicated your life to and sacrificed so much for will eventually betray you. Yes. And do so in so many, many, many ways. Yep. And in many, many times until the ultimate betrayal enter the Grim Reaper. There you go, man. You have no matter. Yeah, it's. Yeah. All this chasing body stuff. I don't know. At any rate, go ahead, Anderson. Honestly. The best longevity elixir is to simply live and pursue that which a person derives enjoyment and pleasure from. Yeah. Easy enough. Yeah. If you get a chance, there is an interesting series on Netflix about the Blue Zones. And these people who live to be 100 or more, and I mean live to be 100 or more, have not somehow made it. Yeah. They didn't just uh, uh, come in on fumes. And actually enjoying those 100 years. I mean, yeah. it's a novel idea. Yeah, from, from the time they were 60 till they made it to 101, it was nothing but making it on fumes. Guts football. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hooray. Doesn't sound too fun. If you get a chance, check it out. Uh, no one is serious. No one is hooked to, to electronics. No one is going to grunt, push, grunt, 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 push, push, we're going to get there if, uh, blah, uh, yeah. Simply live. Yeah. And live simply because there really is no reason not to. They simply live and, and live simply because there is simply no reason not to. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Somebody, I, who said that? <laughs> it's a brilliant, brilliant person. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All these studies and tests and exams and science, 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 and what does a person really have to show for it? Something the Roman Stoics warned of a thousand years ago. Don't buy tomorrow's worries today. That's it. Hooked to electronics, all these tests, all this, this, all that other stuff. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. My phone, my phone, my phone. What am I missing out on and everything else? And, uh, yeah, essentially you are. You buy, are buying tomorrow's worries today. And there you Sometimes go. Sometimes yesterday's, too. I've heard stories oh, of people wearing the, uh, wearing the watches, waking up, feeling, man, okay, pretty good. And then your watch tells you, you, sleep, you slept awful. And you're going, what? 
I feel oh. good though. And then, yeah, the rest of the day you go, huh, oh, I guess I'm I guess tired, I'm huh? tired. Huh. Yeah. And here we are killing ourselves to align with a bunch of arbitrary numbers in the hope of tomorrow. Yeah. The Okinawans have a, comp uh, have a concept that I think is absolutely amazing. And one can, t if can, one can find TED Talks on the subject if they would like, but it is called Ikigai. Ikigai, not Ikigai, Ikigai. And the, the way in one of the TED Talks I saw, the guy said, he said, you actually have to smile to say the word. Ikigai. I-K-I-G-A-I, -I -I, if you're looking up on yeah. YouTube. Ikigai is also described in Dan Butner's. Yeah. Okay. In Dan Butner's Live to 100, The Secrets of the Blue Zones. The Blue Zones. Translated, Ikigai means your reason for living. Why you wake up each morning if you get what I'm saying. Perhaps yeah. the best way to think of Ikigai would be determining one's own beingness, uh, that which an individual knows himself to be, and pursuing those actions that create one's own bliss. One's own bliss whether for the moment or over the course of a lifetime. The French have a term, raison d'être, which also means one's reason or purpose for living. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. And, and it's not that um, it's a one thing and it, it can only be one thing. There it is. It's essentially the reason you got up today and the actions that you put into action to uh, pursue um, that thing that you think today is is worth doing and would be fun to do for no other sake than to, to do that. I read something from L. Ron Hubbard one time that said that uh, people that can just do things for the sake of fun and no other reason are in pretty good shape. Apparently, that would be Ikigai. Yeah. It, yeah. It fuels you for doing more fun stuff, ideally. Mm -hmm. I'd like to point out that was a perfect French accent. That was. Uh, many years ago, Chuck Noll, the head we. coach of the Pittsburgh head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, would call a player into his office who simply could not play anymore and tell them, it might be time to get on with your life's work. work. Yeah. His opinion was that being privileged to play a, a kid's game into your 20s or 30s was probably not a person's life's work, uh, or perhaps it shouldn't be. Yeah. I love this thought. I do. It's, it's time to, to think about getting on with your life's work you know, the thing that you want to try and do and, and so on and so forth. And, and even that is not, uh, and, and we'll see this, this isn't a one thing, the only thing. And oh my God, it's got to be and all the rest of the stuff as we'll see. I mean, your life's work could just simply be enjoying being alive. And as Dr. Dave said, it could be something totally different next month or next hour. It could change yeah. whenever the heck you want, really. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. But here is something that one should keep in mind. All of this, life's purpose, life's work, and reason for living stuff, should not be considered a single destiny, so to speak. It doesn't even have to pertain to one's vocation or work. Yeah, that, that's it. In this, in this culture, in the, Western, in the Western society or culture, we get this idea that it's, it's this one thing. I need to find my life's purpose, that ambition, that thing that I need to do. It's the reason I was put on earth. It's why God put me on earth. I saw an interesting uh, video from this guru, and he had made the comment. He says, what if God doesn't even know you're alive? So here you are. It's like he, he might not even know you're alive, and you think he's got this great purpose for you. Uh, maybe he doesn't. And, and he wasn't trying to be mean-spirited or anything. But if God has created all of these billions of galaxies and everything else, uh, there's a pretty good chance he gave you what you needed to do what you need to do because he wasn't going to be able to babysit you. And uh, I, I, like, I, like that, I, I like that idea a lot. So it doesn't have to pertain to one's vocation or work. No. It can be, it can be, but this is oftentimes too daunting, as if a person has only one chance to get it right or else consider his life a waste of time. Oh, I've wasted it all. It can simply be that thing that one looks forward to during the day, lunch with a friend, time with family, hitting the gym or making some iced tea and sitting in the garden reading uh, and eating a magnificent Oh boy, reading and eating a magnific magnificent chocolate chip cookie would be tough to read a magnificent You know, I'm going to say that again because it's so wonderful. It can be. You could just be sitting in the garden, 
with some iced tea, reading a really cool book, and eating this magnificent chocolate chip cookie. As a matter of fact, when we're done with this, I'm going to go for lunch, and apparently uh, the kids are coming with, and they're going to buy me lunch, and then each give me $20 afterwards. So I'm going to get a free lunch and 60 bucks. So that's my Iki guy today. I'm really looking forward to that. That's amazing. <laughs> it can change, and you can change each day. Yeah. Enough of walking into this one shot at glory crap. Oh, all the time. oh my goodness. I think with all of these electronic metrics that one monitors himself with, that is exactly what he's trying to do, creating arbitrary perfection in a world that is anything but perfect. Yeah. Often when dealing with patients who seem to have a chronic condition, I will ask them, what do you hope to accomplish with the time you have left? That's an interesting thought, you know, so you get these electronic numbers and all this stuff and you're trying to create, a, trying to get perfect in a world that's anything but perfect. And then yet these numbers are arbitrary and they really might not even pertain to uh, what, you're, what you're about. I think last week we talked about that life could be measured in just in how many moments took your breath. Not so many breaths that you took or how many you're taking, but how many actually took your breath. Ah, that was cool. When I watched my kids being born, that was really something. I'll never forget that. So, uh, but yeah, and just like we're saying, you know, when a patient's got this, these chronic pains and aches and everything else, that's really it. It's like, what do you hope to achieve with the time that you have left? However, it's not as heavy as that sounds. This is not a question of terminus. Right. Rather, nothing lasts forever. I was once a kid, I am no longer. I once attended high school and played football, but I do no longer. Right. I once worked in the steel mills, but not any longer. Right. You get the idea. Constantly changing. I'm still alive. Yep. Like everyone else, I'm moving on. And so yep. while in this place called now, what would I like to accomplish today over time or in a lifetime? Yeah, and that's that's really an interesting uh, uh, an interesting point. You know, right what are you what are you hoping to try and do? What would you like to try and accomplish? And it doesn't have to be for a lifetime. It could be for today. I think I'd read something that said most people tend to overestimate what they can do in a day and underestimate what they might accomplish in a lifetime. And that's, that's something. And, and that accomplishment over a lifetime would be a series of accomplishments day to day and things. This isn't a one shot at glory and, and you've got to find and uh, you know, making that million dollar free throw shot at a basketball game or something like that. Who, who cares? You can always change your mind, do something different, come up with a different idea and uh, go do that. You should come up with a different, I mean, you should be able to change your mind. That's a really important ability. Yeah. Yeah. The things that were important to me when I was in elementary school probably aren't now. Well, yeah, for the most part, I still like cartoons and reading kids books and stuff. But, you know, the basic thing, apart from just figuring out how to improve and survive, uh, how you do that, there's an infinite number of ways to do that. Um, and, you know, you can do it. Have fun with it. They created it. Yeah. This needn't, uh, <clears throat> this needn't be my life's ambition. Perhaps I would like to get my wife's garden ready for flowers or ride my motorcycle. This is what I would like to do now, not what I have to do or should do. Yes. Uh, yes, things need to be handled as well, but one cannot forget to do that which recharges its batteries, lest they run flat. Yeah. Most might spend a lifetime doing what they are supposed to do, and for reasons that might not be their own, and never get on with their life's work. Yeah, I know, someday soon. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a heavy thought. You know, it was always a sense of duty, always had to do, you know, it was, uh, everything was this challenge that was going to prepare you for the next time, you know. I remember when I was in elementary school, you know, the reason for fourth grade was because it was meant to get me ready for fifth grade where they weren't going to tolerate my nonsense. When I got to fifth grade, yeah, they tolerated my nonsense. Fifth grade got me ready for sixth grade where they weren't going to tolerate my nonsense. And here I am, 61 years old, and everybody seems to tolerate my nonsense. So I think I've wasted my whole elementary school time. What I would like to do is invite you to take some time for yourself and research this Okinawan uh, concept of Ikigai and let me know what you think. 
Typically, I write about these things, and I'm not sure if our readers slash listeners are actually checking these recommendations out or just finding satisfaction with my explanation. What could be so bad about discovering your passion and letting it drive you? Nothing. Just live. It's that simple. Take care. Yeah, and that's that's the whole thing. It's like I usually tell you all about this stuff, but uh, I'm not going to do that so much in these blogs because you should actually look it up yourself. Uh, Ikigai is something that's very personal. It's, uh, it's something that could really carry you through, help you follow your bliss. It's the action you put into your life to accomplish something that you would like to try and accomplish. And uh, I can't really tell you what that is. And uh, you ought to look it up. Ikigai. For you, by you. Have a good day. Yeah. Hey, take care. And uh, hit the like. And if you have any comments, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about it. If you want to talk about Ikigai or anything else, let me know.